Hi, I'm Mariah Gladstone, founder of Indigi Kitchen, and this is Cook With Us with Well and Good. Today we're making wild rice stuffed squash by filling these acorn squash with a delicious combination of wild rice, bison, onions, and spinach. By utilizing bison in our meals today, we're sending the message that we want bison returned to the ecosystems which they have been taken from. Bison is an important keystone species on the prairies and helps replenish many other plant species around the region. For hand harvested wild rice, we use a four to one ratio and we need one cup of cooked wild rice. So we'll start off with a third of a cup of uncooked wild rice and one and a third cup of water. As we're preparing that, we're going to preheat our oven to 425 degrees and we'll get started making our acorn squash. For this, we're simply going to cut the acorn squash in half so that we'll have two bowls. When cutting through the squash, rotate the squash. If it's really thick to cut through, that'll help start the cut on all sides and slice through in one clean motion. Obviously, make sure that you're being careful with your fingers so that you don't cut anything. Winter squash is wonderful because it has a nice hard skin that helps keep it preserved for weeks and as many as months on end. With most winter squash, you will not eat the skin and so we'll leave it on and it will create a nice roasting dish for the squash itself in which the heat will be trapped inside. I'm brushing the top of my acorn squash with a little bit of sunflower oil to help it cook and then putting it cut side down on my baking sheet. At this point, we're just gonna pop this into the oven for about 20 minutes until it's soft. While our squash is cooking in the oven and our wild rice is cooking, we're gonna brown our bison to get that ready. We'll just add bison to a pan with a little bit of oil because bison is really low in fat, so the oil will help it cook. We're cooking our bison at about a medium high temperature, just enough so that it is all brown and there's no more pink showing. While the bison is browning, I'm also going to grab my cutting board and prepare our onions and our garlic. For this recipe, we're using three cloves of garlic. If you've never cut up garlic before, there's a couple easy tricks to help cut the cloves. You can cut the ends off, which will help you get that papery part off the outside. And to help maximize your garlic flavor, we're going to use the side of our blade to crush the garlic clove horizontally against our cutting board. So we'll crush the garlic clove just to help get all of the juices compressed. And then we can mince the garlic. So we're just cutting the garlic into tiny, tiny pieces so that it can be incorporated into the flavor of the whole dish. Now while I'm doing this, I need to keep an eye on my bison, just stirring it so that the entire pound of burger that we're using can brown. I'm going to add my minced garlic right into my bison as it's still browning so that those flavors can be incorporated into the meat as well. I'm going to make sure that I'm stirring this in well so that it's evenly mixed and the bison and the garlic are able to saute together. I also have some green onions here, which I'm going to cut up into about half inch pieces, and those will be incorporated after the bison is browned. Again, I'm going to make sure to incorporate this all evenly so that it's spread out throughout the dish. Right at the end, I'm going to add my spinach, and the spinach, we're just going to cook long enough so that it's wilted. If we cook it for too long, it's going to make the spinach bitter. At this point, our spinach leaves have lost their shape and we're ready to turn off the heat on our stove. This mixture, we're just gonna put into a large heat safe bowl so that we can stir it together with our other ingredients. We're gonna let our squash cool for about 10 minutes after it gets out of the oven. Squash retains heat incredibly well, especially with its thick skins. We wanna be able to handle this and actually scoop it out a little bit, so we're gonna let it wait for just a second. As you can see, the squash has cooked a little bit, it's changed colors slightly, and it's much softer now. We're going to flip these cups so they now sit cut side up, and in order to do that, I'm actually going to slice off the pointy ends so that any of them that have an unusual side will be able to sit. Some of them may be able to sit just fine the way they are. 
for the two end pieces, I'm gonna cut those off. So where we scooped out the seeds, you'll see that the bowl is not very deep. So what we're going to do is take our spoon again, and now we're gonna scoop out more of that squash filling to enlarge the size of the bowls. With that extra squash that's nice and soft and cooked, we're gonna put that into our bison burger mixture. This will keep that squash flavor into the entire dish, but it'll also give us a lot more room to fill this dish as we begin stuffing these with our wild rice. Perfect, I'm gonna stir this together to incorporate it. The last thing we need in here for our wild rice stuffed squash is of course wild rice. At this point, your rice should be done cooking. So we're gonna take a cup of the cooked rice and we're going to mix it into the rest of this mixture. The last step is super simple. We're just going to take this mixture and fill our wild rice bowls. Feel free to stuff these as full as you can get them. If you have a little bit of extra wild rice mixture left over, no worries. Feel free to eat it while we're going to put these back in the oven for five more minutes. Here's what our finished product looks like. Beautiful acorn squashes stuffed with bison, wild rice, green onions, and spinach. These are simple, and while the garlic and the green onions do add a lot of flavor, with of course the wild rice and bison, I like to serve these with just a little bit of salt and pepper. You don't need a lot to make this really complete. It's wonderful. The squash, is slightly sweet, and the savory taste of the bison is really enriched with the greens that we put in there. And the wild rice has a mild nutty flavor, which helps pull everything together. This is a wonderful meal, and I love serving it because it has everything you need all in one adorable, compact acorn squash bowl. Thanks for watching. You can find the recipe in the description box below the video. And don't forget to subscribe to Well and Good.